Hey everybody, Shoebox Legends here. Thanks for joining me today for a 1953 Topps Baseball themed episode here on the channel. I've really been uh, getting back into my set completion quest here now that we're in the dog days of summer and been experiencing some heats prime baseball season here in New England and I've been plugging away and showing some of my 53 Topps cards towards my set build here on the channel and in the background there that is my childhood 1991 Topps archives Jackie Robinson and I put that up as an example of kind of what got me into the 53 Topps set to begin with it was one of my first uh, vintage loves just because as a young kid, you know, like an eight-year-old in the summer of 1991, I was able to pull those, you know, quote-unquote 1953 cards from packs from the local hobby shop. And I just fell in love with 53 tops back then, uh, got back into the hobby as an adult and determined that I wanted to complete this set. And through a couple different forks in the road, I found myself uh, after the last video about uh, 56 cards or 57 cards in uh, towards a set completion quest. And today I've got the last stack of raw ones that I'd sort of already processed and uh, top loaded up that we're gonna get through today. I think there's maybe a couple dozen here and then we'll give uh, an update on my progress and where I'm going from here. So let's just flip through these. I'm not gonna spend a ton of time on each uh, since we have so many to get through. Uh, but we start with uh, Jungle Jim Rivera from the Chicago White Sox. Awesome card there. Here's one of a uh, now gone franchise, the Washington Senators, or moved franchise, I should say, Wayne Terwilliger. Got a Vern Bickford with the Boston Braves, and I've mentioned this before uh, when talking about the set, but in the lower series, in 1953, the team is the Boston Braves. In the higher series, they are the Milwaukee Braves. So uh, just one of the cool things about the 53 release is that it does reflect the move of the Braves franchise from Boston to Milwaukee. Here's a Fred Hatfield on the Detroit Tigers. Uh, always had a soft spot for this guy because one of my first ever vintage cards was a 52 Bowman Fred Hatfield that I got at an antique store. Uh, nearby where I grew up, and uh, he was with the Red Sox on that card, but he's with Detroit here, but very familiar face and uh, somebody who I always link back to that early Bowman card in my brain. Uh, here's another Senator, Frank Shea, pitcher, and uh, I'm not going to show you all the backs just due to time constraints and trying to keep this video from going too long, but did want to show one or two because, again, these are among my favorite card backs in the history of baseball cards. Uh, Tops just did a bang up job on these. They had a little more space to work with, uh, with these being oversized and they definitely utilized it well and uh, treated us to some beautiful backs. Uh, here's a St. Louis Browns card, which I love these. Jim Dick he looks more like a, a boxer than a baseball player, but cool card there. And as I seem to mention every time, I just love that St. Louis Browns logo. Very, very cool. Here's a Pirates pitcher next. Jim Waugh, great Pirates logo used on these as well. He looks a little bit concerned there. I'm not really sure what's going on, but love the Pittsburgh across the uniform. The, the artwork on these is just great. Um, if, if you've never held these in hand, I would really recommend, you know, just pick your favorite team or even just any random card and, and just go grab a single for less than $5 from this set and hold it in hand. They, they really do feel like little works of art. They're just such cool cards. Uh, Gene Hermansky here with the Cubs. There's a, here's a guy who's happy to be on a baseball card, Virgil Stahl Cup with the St. Louis Cardinals. Nice smile there. There's a Red Sox card. So we haven't seen a lot of Red Sox so far in my uh, rummaging through these 53 Tops cards. And I'll, I'll explain why uh, towards the end of this video, but I do have this Hal Brown, who uh, uh, his nickname, I would assume, was Hi-Hat, Hal Hi-Hat Brown, um, and that, of course, that very strange uh, Boston Red Sox logo from the 50s, pretty cool, the anthropomorphic sock. Here's a nice one, Jim Pendleton, and you can see what I uh, mentioned earlier here uh, with respect to the Braves franchise, but uh, we have this Vern Bickford, which was card number 161. Boston Braves, by the time we get to Jim Pendleton, 
card number 185, which was the next series out, we are seeing the Milwaukee Braves listed as the team. So really nice card there. We'll put that one up in the background. Jim Fridley is up next with the Cleveland Indians, now Guardians. Here's a Eddie Kazik with the Detroit Tigers. Very serious looking Eddie Kazik. Ed McGee here with the Philadelphia Athletics and uh, love the elephant logo that were used uh, that was used on these cards, I should say. It's really, really nice. And again, I, I think I mentioned this during some of the previous episodes, but pretty much every card that you're seeing here, I paid uh, between like $1.50 and uh, $4 for, I would guess, over the years. Here's a Bob Keegan. So these don't have to be expensive. The, these are not perfectly mint copies, but they just look so, so nice. And uh, I adore them. I would be more than happy to just get cards that look this decent uh, for my set. I am... For Hall of Fame players, and I do have some of those, I've yet to get to them, but I do have a couple. I do try to get graded still, um, just because, I don't know, when I'm spending that much money on a card, I, I like having it authenticated. But for these common players, like, I'll just pick these up off ComC or eBay, and they don't really break the bank other than the high numbers. Uh, here's a Forest Main, great name there. And I love the plain wooden fence behind them. It's just something really nice about that. Here's uh, Marion Fricano, another athletics card there with kind of a cool background. And uh, this is a rare case, you know, 99% of these cards are closely cropped portraits. Uh, but on some of these, like this one, you actually get a little bit of a zoomed out perspective and kind of can see the whole player and a little bit more of the ballpark background. There aren't a ton of cards like that in the set. Uh, Willie Mays is an example of one, and he is a a high number, that third year Willie Mays card, which is one of the most brutal cards in a 53 top set pursuit. Here's a smiling Gordon Goldsberry, and it looks a little bit to me, and always has, like he looks slightly like the mascot here on this card. There's a little, I don't know, there's something there. There's something to that, but cool Gordon Goldsberry there. We'll put him actually uh, right out in front of Jim Dick there. Next up, we got another Cub, Carl Sawatsky, and we're getting towards the end of the stack here. I'll try to keep this under 10 minutes in length. Carl Sawatsky, cool one there. Got Dick Bokelman, and I, I don't know a lot about a lot of these players. Um, you know, I've as a kid, I read up on baseball history a ton, and I still do to this day, but it tends to focus on, you know, more of the star players. So uh, these guys who played, you know, 30 years before I was even born, I don't know too much about them, but I still can appreciate the cards and just the beauty and, and the aesthetics of this particular set, and I just love picking these up. Here's a Jim Wilson with the Milwaukee Braves again, because we're into the high numbers now, or higher numbers. None of these are the, the final high number series. We have a Jim Greengrass with the Reds, and then uh, the last card that I had in this stack, Les Fusselman of the St. Louis Cardinals. This is card number 218. And every card that we've looked at so far uh, on the channel in these few installments that I've done have been uh, number 220 or below. And that's because uh, above 220, you are into the final series. And that's a very short printed series where even common cards are relatively expensive. And I do have a handful of those, but that's definitely gonna be my biggest challenge when it comes to knocking this entire set out. Um, but, you know, for now, we focused on the lower series, um, but I mentioned earlier in the video, we haven't seen a lot of Boston Red Sox, and that's because when I first made a run at this set, I was trying to do it in graded format, and I got all the way up to about 80 to 100 cards, maybe a little over 100 even, um, that were all in like PSA 6, maybe one or two PSA 5s, but eventually realized that was going to be a way too costly way to go about this. I had other hobby interests, and when things went bananas... In the hobby, I sold a lot of those commons and, uh, you know, a couple high number slabs for a really good sum of money and got some pretty nice cards for the collection that we'll talk about another day. But what I did do when I broke apart that graded set attempt is I held on to my Red Sox cards. And so I still have them in the slab. And so I've been a little bit slower to pick up the raw Red Sox just because I don't really care for my set whether the cards are raw or graded. I'm going to put them in some type of protection either way. Uh, and I can easily store all these together in a monster box 
Um, so most of my Red Sox are graded like this Ted Lepsio right here. And he's a PSA 6 uh, because he is a survivor from that initial graded set that I ended up breaking apart. And I'm very glad I did. I have no regrets. Um, you'll see when I show off a couple of the cards that I took home with the funds from that, um, kind of maybe kind of why I have no regrets there. But um, And then since then, I was close to a Red Sox team set when I broke that apart, I think missing just a handful of cards. And so I've been picking up uh, additional graded Red Sox cards, and I don't really care if it's a six any longer. Um, I don't need them to all be a matching six. I kind of learned that lesson a long time ago. Uh, so here's like a very beautiful Mel Parnell that I picked up that was in a five because it looks fantastic. Looks every bit as nice as all the other cards that we saw today and in previous videos, and it kind of just matches the overall aesthetic of my set, which is, you know, good visual appeal at a low to mid grades to make the set affordable. So there's kind of a sneak peek at uh, more of what we'll be looking at in further 1953 Tops installments, uh, getting a little bit into the graded area of the collection. I do have some more raw 1953 Tops that I need to add into my set pursuit and sort of organize and uh, put into the pot with what we've seen on the channel so far. Uh, but roughly speaking, what we see here today on this video combined with what I've shown in the past uh, I'm right up over that 80 card mark, and that's a 30% complete set or so. Uh, so it feels pretty good to get to about the three tenths of the way complete. And uh, as I said, I do have more to show that I'll try to get into a future installment here on the channel because I know everybody loves vintage. Uh, I certainly do, and uh, I enjoy showing uh, what I've been able to accumulate on this front. But for today, we're going to call it there at the 30% mark. I really appreciate you stopping by and checking out some of these extremely old baseball cards that are coming up now on uh, 70 years old next year. I uh, hope you enjoyed these, and I'll be back in the very near future with some more sports card content. Until then, take care.